So let's head back over to our first example problem. It says an assembly line worker makes errors at random at a mean rate of seven for every hundred assemblies he handles. And we want to know what are the chances he makes no errors? Well, first we got to realize that this is a Poisson distribution. There, he's making errors and they're random. We know that the mean rate throughout the whole experiment is going to remain constant at a rate of seven for every 100 assemblies he handles. So what is the probability that he makes no errors in this same allotment of 100 assemblies? So here's a page from your NCES reference handbook, and this is page, this is, uh, this is version 9.4 for computer-based testing. And if you hone in right there on your reference handbook, you'll see that you are given the formula, the equation for the Poisson distribution. So we have lambda, we have x. X is going to be your random variable, and lambda is actually going to be your mean. So let's pull that back over to our solution and let's just define these so we know that the function is going to output some probability. Lambda is our mean and x is our random discrete variable. So let's highlight what we are given. We're given that the mean is 7 errors per allotment. We know that the interval is going to be 100 assemblies. And you'll see that uh, it's very important to recognize whether or not the uh, interval of, of in which this mean is occurring is equivalent to the interval in which you're being asked to define a particular value. And you'll see in future problems when they're not equal, some work needs to be done. But in this case, we are told that we're looking for the probability that he will make no errors for the same allotment of assemblies. So our interval is going to be 100 assemblies. And of course our experiment, we're going to take the random variable x and that's going to be zero errors. And of course we're looking for that probability output. So there's our Poisson distribution function over there to the right, just copy and pasted it. We can plug in our variables. So again, our, our random variable is zero er errors, which I highlighted in orange in our formula directly from our NCES reference handbook. And then our mean is simply seven and that's lambda and that's, we just plug seven in. So if we hop in to our calculator and we just plug that in, remember factorial is a product and zero factorial is equal to one. And when we push all of our numbers into our calculator, we get a value of 0 0.000912, which tells us that the probability that he will make no errors is very slim. It's 0.09%. I need to talk to this individual. But it's 0.09%. And let's hope that's not an airplane assembly or something more critical, such as... Uh, anything that could be catastrophic. But uh, in this case, it's a fraction of a 10th percent uh, probability that he can, he will not make any errors. All right, let's flip the page and we'll, we'll work that same example. Now we're gonna give him a little leeway and say, what if, what's the probability that he will make nine errors? So same problem, but in this case, we're just trying to assess what are the chances that he's actually going to make a ton of errors nine in this case above the mean rate in which he makes them again we know that the errors are at random the mean rate remains the same at seven and the assemblies are uh, the the interval is a hundred and again we are looking for the probability that he will make nine errors for the same allotment of assemblies so the, then again, we uh, hop back to page 53 of our NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook. Again, that's version 9.4. If y'all are looking at any other version, it may be a different page, but there will be a table showing all the probability and dis density function uh, that you will need to know come exam day. And specifically, we're just worried about the Poisson. The Poisson. 
So we pull that back over to our problem statement. Again, we're gonna have some probability output when we relate the mean and the random discrete variable in the way that is defined. Again, what are we given? We're given the mean is seven errors. 100 assemblies is our interval. This remains the same for the probability that we are assessing. And this time our random variable is going to be nine errors. So we pull over that general formula. We plug in our information. This time you see seven remains the same as it did in the previous problem, but we changed the orange value to nine. So we plug that into our calculator and we get 0 0.101, which tells us that there's a 10% chance that this man is going to make a ton of mistakes above his mean rate, 10.1%.